Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Elevate and Reflect with DC, where we dive into self-improvement, personal growth, mindful living. I'm your host, Dark Cancer, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me back today. Now, we all experience stress in our lives, whether it's in work, relationships, personal challenges, stress is inevitable. It's something you can't completely get rid of. However, it's how we manage and deal with that stress that truly matters. And in today's episode, we're going to explore various strategies and techniques to recognize, avoid, and reduce stress effectively. But before we dive into that, let's take a quick recap of our previous episode on dealing with stress and recognizing it. Now, in our last episode, Okay. We discussed the importance of managing stress and how it affects both our physical and mental health. We covered several key points, including recognizing stress, identifying personal stress triggers, uh, looking after your physical, uh, physiological self through exercise, balanced diet, and adequate sleep, uh, managing your time, learning to just say no to whatever it is you just can't do instead of putting yourself through the hell of trying to do it making time for fun and relaxation, as well as developing techniques to feel in control of your life. Now, if you haven't listened to that episode uh, yet, I highly recommend checking it out uh, for more comprehensive understanding of stress management. Uh, But now we're going to move forward and expand on those same ideas from the previous episode with some new insights as well as practical tips. I hope that you guys enjoy that. And let's begin, shall we? Let's start with recognizing stress, okay? The first steps uh, to managing and dealing with stress is to recognize it, okay? Now, understanding the signs of stress and identifying your stress or personal stress triggers can be a significant difference. Like I said, it's different for every single person. So, first things first. Learn to recognize the signs of stress, okay? So, the question here now is, what are those signs of stress? Well, Stress manifests in various ways. This can be headaches, stomach upsets or ulcers, uh, indigestion, sleep problems, emotional imbalances, uh, irregularities in your normal day-to-day schedules, uh, imbalance in what you're eating, uh, imbalance uh, hormonal uh, disasters. You could stress yourself out to a, a yeast infection. You, there's a lot of things that can happen. There's some people that get so stressed that if they push the, get to their peak, uh, they can have a complete seizure. Now, emotionally, you might find yourself more irritable or having trouble relating to your emotions. That's also a thing. These symptoms can be, what's the word? non-specific so it's crucial to be aware of your body and your mind's signals be aware of how your body normally functions and take heed from stuff that other people say when it shows or they see something that shows out of the norm for you okay two um i want you to identify your personal stress triggers things you already know are trigger points so that you can be aware of them and teach those that are close to you to help you look for them so that they can help you avoid them Each of us has specific situations or people that trigger stress, okay? It's a, sometimes it's a single event, but often it's a buildup of incidents over time. It's not a single thing once here and there and it's gone. Tools like stress diaries or stress quizzes, those exist, uh, can help you pinpoint these triggers, making it easier to take action and manage your stress levels. Speaking of which, um, let's talk about avoiding stress. This can be done. You can avoid it. You can't avoid it forever, but you can avoid it. While it it's impossible to avoid all stress, okay, there are several strategies to minimize it. Okay, um, one. Look after yourself physically, okay? Remember, regular exercise can help metabolize stress hormones and restore a sense of calm. Eating a well-balanced diet and getting enough sleep are essential. Also, avoid stimulants like caffeine, nicotine, especially when stressed. Uh, They can help make a big difference, okay? Two, manage your time, okay? Prioritize your tasks, Set realistic goals. Break down overwhelming lists into uh, manageable tasks and delegate when possible. Learning to say no to additional responsibilities that you don't need to be doing can also reduce your stress levels. 
Which, now that I said that, brings up point three. Be realistic about your capabilities. Okay? Understand that you can't do everything at once. And if there's something you haven't been able to do, even though you used to be able to do it in the past, mark it as something you can't do. Just because you could in the past doesn't mean you can now. Also, double your time estimates for tasks that you have uh, to avoid overcommitting or undercommitting and to give a little bit of leeway in case something happens. You can't account for everything. Trust me, I have tried. That's more stress than you need in your life. Which brings me to number four. Make time for fun and relaxation. I know I said this in the last episode, but I can't stress it enough. Schedule activities to bring you joy and relaxation. Laughter and enjoyment can significantly, significantly reduce stress and improve overall health, both for you and the people around you. Whether it's your grandma, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, best friend, girlfriend, whatever, your dog. Especially your dog. Your dog and your cat can definitely tell when you're stressed. For those who have pets. If you want to know why they're staring at you funny, it's because they know you're not okay. And they want to make you feel okay. Because you not being okay is making them not okay. Which brings me to number five, actually. Develop problem solving techniques. You can probably use your pets for this one. Feeling in control can reduce... Stress. Write down problems, brainstorm solutions, and evaluate the pros and cons of each. This structure approach uh, can help you manage stress way more effectively. Okay? Okay, so, but that's trying to avoid stress. Now, for those who can't avoid it, let's talk about uh, reducing stress. That's a thing. Sometimes it's not possible to avoid stress completely, like I said. So, here are a couple ways to reduce it. I got about five. One, two, three, four, five. I got five. <laughs> First off, focus on just two or three stressors at a time. Okay. Identify the most significant stressor, whatever it may be, and work on resolving those first. Once you've managed that, move on to the less stressor things. Okay. Two, Build positive relationships. That means surrounding yourself with people who uplift you and avoid those who uh, don't. Okay. Strong relationships can help mitigate effects of stress. You may find a person who's always telling you, hey, just calm down a little bit. Let's talk through this. What seems to be the problem? Or how can I help you today? You know, you may find them annoying. You may even find them irritating. But know this. If they're asking you this, they care. And they want to make you feel better because they can clearly see you're stressed out. And no one wants to be around a stressed out person because it just makes them even more stressed out. Trust me. I know. That being said, if that's not possible or if it is, it brings me to point three. Talk to someone. Please talk to someone. Just because you're stressed out and you think you're stressing everyone else out so you don't think you need to be around them, that's a big load of bull, if I have to be honest. If you don't talk to somebody and tell them what's wrong, that stress can turn into something else, which we'll discuss on this channel at a later date, that's way worse and way more irritating. Trust me. Sharing what you're, sharing your feelings with your friends, a colleague, a professional, a uh, teacher, instructor, a uh, your supervisor, God knows, some of them need to have this type of training of dealing with employees so that they can help them work and do their best, can provide perspective and even help reduce stress. Professional help such as counseling can also be beneficial. I highly, highly recommend it. That being said, number four, avoid excessive caffeine, nicotine, if you can help it. Get the patches or something. Also, stay the heck away from alcohol. If you're a normal type of person who's stressed out, alcohol is not going to help you. If anything, it's going to make it worse or give you the jitters or cause you to do something stupid that will either get someone else killed or yourself. Oh, and on that note, stay away from pints of ice cream. <laughs> I shouldn't have to say this, but if you're stressed, eating a pint of ice cream is not going to help you. If anything, is going to help you gain five pounds, which then you're going to be mad at yourself later and you're going to be stressing on how to lose it. These substances can increase your stress levels. You need to listen to your body and adjust what you intake accordingly. If you're going to stress eat, eat something that's not going to harm your weight in the long run, but it still tastes good and you can enjoy it like a rice cracker or something. 
on that note, my last point is the relaxation techniques. I mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again. Practice uh, things like self hypnotis, uh, hyp- hyp- hypnosis, hypnosis, hippopotamus. Not that. Ignore the self hypnosis. Don't, don't do that. Uh, yoga, meditation can help reduce stress. Uh, exercising, running a lap, playing a game, going bowling, cooking without a knife, <laughs> unless you absolutely need one. Um, these are things that can help you. It, don't worry if re, if the re, relaxation feels challenging at first. Trust me, it will. It improves with practice. There are times where I'm so stressed out, so annoyed that I want to scream, shout, yell, and let it all out. <laughs> That I just turn around and ask my dad uh, when I'm at his house because like, I don't have a car at the moment. Hey, can I borrow the car? Or can I go bowling? I'm going to be honest with you right now. I have never heard them tell me no when I tell them I need to go bowling. Reason? They know I'm using it as a means to stress out and stress relief. It's also a way to just let me go out and work out. For some people, they need that. You never know. Okay? That. It's all dealing with, my, my next topic was living with stress. It all has to do with that, okay? I know it's important that we deal with stress, but it's also important to recognize that some stress is unavoidable and can be actually beneficial to you. It depends on what it is. When you're in a high, high enough stress environment that it gets you going, you can actually get a weird adrenaline boost. Take advantage of that. If you realize that's what's going on, take advantage of it. Change your mindset. View stress as a positive force that can help you and manage it more effectively. Because if you use it as a driving force, you can turn what used to be stressful into a form of motivation, getting you into the habit of doing stuff that you otherwise normally would not want to do or wouldn't care to do or have no interest in whatsoever. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of stuff out there. And a lot of things that you can do, but are only accessible, believe it or not, when you're stressed out. I know it's strange, but that's a thing. So, keeping that in mind, I want you to keep all that in mind. And remember that managing stress is a personal journey for everybody. What works for one person may not work for another. I'm giving you my stories because I'm hoping they'll be helpful. It doesn't mean that my solutions are going to be your solutions. Obviously not. Okay? It's essential to find the solutions that suit you best. Whether it's recognizing stress and avoiding it, if that helps you, do it. Or if you are the kind of person who can reduce it by just cutting things out, not with a knife. I'm just going to go ahead and say that now. Um... These techniques can help you lead a healthier and way more balanced life. Which now kind of brings me to the question of today's episode. Here's a question for you to ponder. What are your top two or three stressors and what steps can you take today to begin managing them? I want you to think about that, okay? Feel free if you choose to. You don't have to. But feel free to share your thoughts and experiences on our Patreon discussion board or on the YouTube comment section if you're uh, on our YouTube channel. Your stories could inspire others or help others in our community, just like mine's help inspire you. You know? And with that, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Elevate and Reflect with DC. Now, if you found this episode helpful, uh, please consider subscribing, leaving a review, and sharing it. Uh, Your support means everything to me, and it helps the show grow and keeps moving forward. But until next time, stay mindful, stay positive, and keep elevating your life. Have a blessed rest of your day.